Morning everybody, Captain Chris here again from the education team at Save the Bay. Uh, coming at you live with our 10 a.m. Facebook stream for our daily Breakfast by the Bay series uh, that we're hosting every day here on Facebook. Really excited to be bringing another edition to you. Um, I've been loving watching all of our educators offer all of these educational opportunities to all you learners at home. It's been really fun to watch uh, and also take part in. I've loved all of the comments that you've been leaving. You've been asking some really great questions. So I uh, hope to have some more interactions with you today. That would be really great. Um, like I said, I, I've been watching a lot of these and I feel like we've kind of left off of a little, a little bit of a subsection of some of the things that we could be talking about. We've come to you with a lot of information about different habitats throughout Narragansett Bay, uh, as well as a lot of the animals that live in those habitats. So I felt like we were leaving one group out uh, and I wanted to talk a little bit about that today. I wanna to say first that in a couple minutes, um, we might wanna take some notes. So if you have a piece of paper laying around uh, with a pen or a pencil, it'd be great to grab that at the moment uh, while I'm not talking about anything that's like incredibly important. Um, if you have questions while we're going, make sure to type them down. Letty's behind the camera. She'll try and uh, shout out any questions at me. Make them easy though so I know the answers, right? Um, and just keep on firing or commenting along as we go throughout the day. So like I said, we've been talking a lot about a lot of the habitats and a lot of the animals that we find throughout Narragansett Bay, but there's a big group of organisms that we've been leaving out. Um, so I wanna talk today about some of the differences between plants that are on land and some of the plant-like organisms that live in Narragansett Bay and in the oceans around the world that are not plants, but they act a lot like them. Uh, so if you guys at home might know, what are some of the, what's the plant-like organisms that I might be talking about that live in Narragansett Bay and in the ocean that we find on the beach sometimes? I think I heard some yelling through the phone, or maybe there's some comments coming in. You're right, they're seaweed. So we're going to talk a little bit about seaweed today um, and kind of how it's different than plants. Seaweed fall into a really big group of plant-like organisms called algae. So you might hear me use those two words interchangeably, going between algae and seaweed when we're talking today. Algae are really cool, and they're found all over the planet, uh, on land and in the water, and also in freshwater and saltwater, so in oceans, but also freshwater. So algae can be anything from like the big seaweed that we find on the beach that I'm gonna be talking about today, or little green fuzz that grows on a rock by a stream, or also uh, what, like what grows in Captain Chris's uh, water bottle when he hasn't been cleaning it for a while. Sometimes we get some algae in there as well. <laughs> and then all of our ed ed educators remind me that I got to clean that up a little bit. <laughs> so we're going to talk about those. They're really cool, but they're very different from plants on land and most people don't know about it. So the way we're going to do that today is compare them using something called a Venn diagram. Now, if you've used a Venn diagram, awesome. If not, I'm going to show you how to make one. So if you've got that piece of paper to make a Venn diagram, it's basically just two big circles. So we're going to make one circle off to the left a little bit, and that's going to represent plants. So you can write above plants. Those are our plants on land, like trees and flowers and grass. And then we're going to make another circle, and you want to make them so that they overlap in a spot in the middle, and that's going to be our seaweed. And in case you can't read, we'll draw some pictures also, so we don't forget what side is what. So I'll draw a tree and then a type of seaweed called a kelp over here, all right? Beautiful, that's the best Captain Chris can do. That's why he went to school for science and not for art, right? <laughs> um, so a Venn diagram works by being able to compare two things and in each side, we'll put things that are true for plants only or true for seaweed only and in the middle are things that are true for both of them. So the things that are, make them different are mainly two types of structures that they have. And one, the first, you guys might know, what is the part of a plant that reaches down into the ground and the plant uses to suck water up from the ground with all of the nutrients? You can shout it at the, at the computer right now or at your phone right now. You probably know the answer. I think I heard it. Yeah, those are roots. So plants on land have roots. Things like trees, grasses, and flowers have roots. Guess what? Seaweed, no roots. So on our seaweed side, we're gonna write no roots. All right, so that's one big thing that's different between plants and seaweed. Plants have roots, seaweed don't. There's another really big difference between plants and seaweed or other types of algae. And that is plants on land have a type of support structure. 
that allows them to grow really, really tall up into the air and fight against gravity. And that support structure is called a vascular system. It's probably a word you haven't heard before. So I'm just going to write a support structure over here. So this is kind of like a scaffold that holds them up while they grow, that vascular system. It allows them to grow really tall. The tallest tree on the planet right now is 275 feet tall. It lives out in California. So to give you an idea, that's two and a half times as tall as the Statue of Liberty. Really, really tall. And it can do that, grow real tall, because it has a support structure. Seaweed, guess what? No support structure. None. So Ms. Letty, our lights just went off again. Does it look all right, or do I need to dance just like last Monday? Oh, there, there we, go. we go. You turned it on for me. Thank you. <laughs> Good. So no support structure. So I want to show you what that looks like in a plant and in a seaweed. So this morning, from my front yard, I picked a daffodil. So if I hold that daffodil at the bottom, it's able to stand up straight and tall on its own. I don't have to hold it from above in order to get it look like it normally would, like a flower going out of the ground. So it's because it has that support structure. It's nice and rigid. So remember, seaweed don't have that. So here is a piece of what's called a rockweed that Letty and I picked up off the beach today. So what you can see is that I can hold it up right now just like Ooh. water would be. I it on myself. Oh, there sorry. we go. You guys got a selfie of Ms. Letty for a moment there. There it is. So this is our seaweed that normally lives in the water. So when the water's all around it, water holds the seaweed up. But if I let go, it flops down. Mm. No support structure, right? So those are our two big differences between are plants on land and seaweed, roots and a support structure. But there is something that they have in common, and it has to do with what all plants and seaweed need for food. Do you at home know what plants need to make their food or what they use to make their food? You shout it out. It's really big in the sky. <laughs> yep, that's right. They need the sun. So plants and seaweed do something called photosynthesis, and they use the sun and three other things. Water that they suck up from the ground if you're a plant, or that's all around them if they're a seaweed. Carbon dioxide, which is a gas in the atmosphere, it's all around us, and it's all around the plants in the ocean, or the algae in the ocean. We're just going to write CO2 for carbon dioxide. And the very last thing is what's down in the ground that gets into the water that plants pull up with their roots, and it's called nutrients. I didn't leave myself enough room right here. So when seaweed and plants have sun and water and carbon dioxide and nutrients, they can make all their own food. Awesome. Cool. So we have one question. Yeah, go for it. Without roots, how does seaweed get nutrients from the ground? That is a really, really good question. Thank you for asking. So on land, all of the nutrients are down in the ground. So the roots stick down in of the plant and suck the water up as it passes through the sand and sediment and mud and dirt and take the nutrients with it. So in the ocean and in the bay, where's the water? It's all around you. So all of the water around you has all of the nutrients. So if you are an algae or a seaweed like this rockweed, all of the parts and pieces of you can suck up water and get nutrients with it. Really, really good question. So if you travel with me, I'm gonna come over to a picture here. I'll make sure to reintroduce myself. So if you're just tuning in, my name's Captain Chris. I am part of the education team here at Save the Bay. We're coming at you live every day at 10 o'clock with our Breakfast by the Bay series to try and give our learners at home opportunities to continue to stay up on issues in Narragansett Bay um, and things that are going on so we can continue to learn our science uh, even while we're at home. So in the description of the video later on, we're going to have a link for uh, a worksheet that you'll be able to download. And that's going to uh, give you a couple questions about things we're learning today. And in that are two pictures kind of like I've drawn right here, of our plants and our seaweed. So we learn in the Venn diagram things that are a little bit different between them, and I want to show you some of the parts and pieces, because they have different names also. So this is my lovely picture of a sunflower that I tried to draw for you all. It's good, not great, but it's good enough to help us uh, label some of the parts and pieces. So we already talked about what do we call the things that stick down into the ground and use or the plant used to suck up water and nutrients. Yeah, yeah, those are the roots. So we'll label those roots. All right, here's some things we haven't talked about yet. The part of that flower that grows straight up, that's called the stem. And then lastly, these big green things sticking off of the stem. Yeah, they are our leaves. That is a leaf. 
All right, so those are words that we're used to hearing when we're talking about plants. Seaweed has a lot of things that look very similar, but are named different. So we said, seaweed has no roots. They have something called a holdfast. And a holdfast does just that. It sticks onto a rock or a shell on the bottom and allows the seaweed to anchor in place and hold tight or hold fast to that rock so it doesn't float away. Seaweed don't have a stem. They have something called a stipe. And then lastly, they have things that look like leaves, but they're not. They have a different name. And those are called blades. So those are some of the parts of seaweed that look a lot like a plant, but are very different. Awesome. So again, if you have any questions as we're going along, make sure to uh, shoot them off to us and we'll try and address them as they come in. Um, I want to continue to move over and show some of you all what some of these algae look like. So come on, follow me, Ms. Luddy. Great. So when we're looking at all of these algae or these seaweed algae that live out in the bay, uh, they fall into three groups or three categories. And luckily scientists this time made it very, very easy for us to, uh, to identify them because they're all grouped together by color. So if you know your colors, you can help identify some seaweed. It's really great. Also, another link that's gonna be available later on today is a link to an identification guide for lots of seaweed that are all around Narragansett Bay and also Long Island Sound. Um, so you'll be able to identify some individual species. Great, and uh, Chris, we have yep. a couple questions from our viewers. Absolutely. Our friend Mike wants to know, can you eat seaweed? Oh, really good question. There are actually a lot of types of seaweed that you can eat. Uh, I'm gonna show you one in a moment that's called sea lettuce because it looks like lettuce and you can eat it just like lettuce as well. It's very green, it's pretty tasty. Um, if you've gone to maybe a sushi restaurant, you could have got a seaweed salad that has some green algae or green seaweed in it. Uh, also an algae or seaweed called nori, that's a red seaweed, is used to wrap up um, sushi. So if you find that seaweed uh, wrap on sushi, that is a red seaweed called nori. Great. Great question. Yeah, and then uh, someone else, our friend Reagan wants to know, does seaweed have any seeds it spreads like flowers and plants do? Oh, really interesting. Good question, Reagan. Thank you. Yeah, so um, there are lots of different ways that seaweed make more of them. They do one thing called spores. So sometimes they'll shoot spores out into the water. And what's great is those spores float around on their own. And they don't need to find any other type of seaweed to fertilize in order to make more. So the spores will just grow around. Um, and then there are some seaweed that have different life stages uh, and they also make something very similar to seeds as well. So they have stuff like pollen that goes out into the water to find other seaweed. Really good question, Reagan. Great, and just one more right now. Yep. Our friend Eric wants to know, uh, it's a question about kelp. How does kelp stand up without a support structure? Oh yeah, really good question. So um, uh, if we come back to, I drew, come over to this picture real quick. What I drew on this type of kelp, if you look closely, are these little balls along the sides. And those are little air-filled bladders, a lot like the rockweed that I was showing you before. So if you've been down to the beach, you might have played with these before. The little ends, if you squeeze them, listen close. Oh, maybe you might have saw that. They are little air bladders that pop. So things like kelp and rockweed have air bladders called pneumatocysts that hold them up. It's a lot like a life jacket does for you when you're in the water floating around. Right? So some of them can be over 100 feet tall and they grow up to the top using those air bladders. Great question, Eric, thank you. So I wanna get back to how we uh, group some of these together. Now we said all of our algae, all of our seaweed go into groups by color and there's three of those colors. So Ms. Letty's gonna get a little close to show you some of the ones that we gathered today. So in one bucket here, that's right, those are our greens. This is the one called sea lettuce looks a lot like a lettuce that might be on your plate. Uh, this is one where if you know the water is clean in the, the beach that you're at, you could go ahead and eat that. It just kind of gets stuck in your teeth a little bit. There are lots of different types of green. Some are fuzzy, some are stringy, some are leafy like the sea lettuce. So green is our first color of algae, our first group of algae. The next one up, as Miss Letty continues over, are our browns. So there's two examples of browns in here. One is very leafy, kind of like that sea lettuce, right? So a big, broad blade, remember, because I don't have a leaf. And then the other, which I was showing before, is the rockweed. And those stick onto the rocks in the intertidal zone using something called a holdfast that we talked about. And they have those little air bladders to help them float and stay up near the surface and get lots of sun. 
So those are our browns. We saw our greens. The last color are our reds. Uh, we got a type of algae here today, a type of seaweed called Chanel weed. It's very light and fuzzy and fluffy, fluffy. Uh, but there are lots of reds also, some that look like those nice big broad leaves or blades like I showed you on the reds and greens. And so that's one of our types of reds. So when you go down to the beach, next time you go down, see if you can find an example of a red or a brown or a green and see if you can find one of each color. It's a really cool way to try and see what is at your local beach or your local intertidal zone. Yeah. So again, I'm Chris here from Save the Bay, from the, our education team, offering you a little bit of uh, educational lessons every day at 10 o'clock, uh, part of our Breakfast by the Bay series. Really excited to be coming into your homes, uh, your kind of makeshift classrooms as you continue to learn about the Bay uh, in these times when we're not necessarily at school. Um, so I told you all of our colors of algae, where we can find them on the beach. What's really cool is you might have seaweed, or at least parts of seaweed, in your home, and you didn't even know it. So there is a type of red seaweed called Irish moss, and if you grind it all up, you make something called carrageenan or carrageenan. And that is used in a lot of household products. So I would challenge you today, after the video is over, go around your house and I want you to see if you can find some products that have carrageenan in them. And you'd be surprised. They're in a lot of different things like ice cream or sometimes in toothpaste. Or Ms. Letty and I uh, went to our refrigerator here at Save the Bay at our Bay Center today and found some Coffee Mate creamer and that has carrageenan in it or carrageenan. Uh, it helps keep that nice and smooth. Also, our salad dressing, this uh, Boathouse Farms, Boathouse Farms, sorry, the salad dressing has some carrageenan in, in it also. So you might find it in also makeup, paint, and other food items around the house. So definitely start poking around later on today and see if you can find some items that have carrageenan in them. Cool. And then lastly, I wanted to let you know that as we do these, uh, Breakfast by the Bay series in the morning live stream. We're also putting out a lot of really cool videos in the afternoon that are pre-recorded that will be kind of supplemental to a lot of the things we're doing. So later on today, if you go to our Facebook page, you're gonna find a video that Ms. Letty and I made of where we're going down to the beach, gathering some of these seaweed like I did here, and doing what's called a seaweed pressing, where you can press them and dry them out and keep them forever. You can use them for science or for art, things to hold on to, it's a way to identify and keep them forever and ever. So what that ends up looking like, uh, I've done some of our algae pressings or our seaweed pressings ahead of time here. They can be these beautiful big pieces of things like this is our kelp that I was talking about before that we have here in Narragansett Bay. Uh, this can get to be about 45 feet tall in Narragansett Bay if there's enough water. This is a type of algae called porphyra. Uh, this is the nori that I believe Mike asked us a little while ago. So if you layer a couple pieces of nori together, you could eat your seaweed. So you can make them to identify them a single piece or something I did the other day was make a nice little piece of art with a green field and a tree. This is some of our Irish moss right here. So make sure to check out that video later today with our link for how to identify different algaes around Narragansett Bay and how to go through the process of pressing a lot of these algaes so you can make some art with them. Any other questions before I leave everybody? Yeah, we had one question. Someone said that they heard that eelgrass is important to Narragansett Bay, and they're wondering if eelgrass is a seaweed or if it's a plant. Oh, really, really good question. Yeah, so eelgrass is very important habitat in Narragansett Bay. So our, if you can picture a meadow on land, there are meadows of eelgrass underneath the bay also. Eelgrass is actually a true plant. So there are some species of plant that live under the water and those are known as our eelgrass and turtle grass and they all look very similar and live a very similar life. And eelgrass do have roots that stick down into the sand and mud to grow. So that is a lot like a grass on land, it just lives in the salt water at the bottom. Any other questions? Uh, that's going to do it for now. Awesome. So remember, go out to the beach. If you have one near you sometime, try and find some reds, greens, and browns, and you can identify them using the identification guide that's going to be posted a little later after uh, this afternoon in our video with an opportunity to learn how to make your own algae pressing as well. Also, the worksheet is in the uh, description section for this lesson this morning, so you can revisit this video and answer some of those questions. And then the last thing I would ask is if you like what you're seeing uh, last week and this week and as we continue on through April, uh, we'll continue to ask to just whatever you're able to, if you're able to donate to Save the Bay, we would love to have your support. Uh, today is a little different because today, April 1st, is in Rhode Island our 401 Gives 
uh, campaign that's going on. So instead of going to our normal donate link on our website, uh, if you visit 401gives.com, there are a list of charitable organizations that would love your support right now in these tough times. And you, if you're able to give whatever, how little or how big you're able to, uh, we would really appreciate your support, uh, whether it's able to, to donate that way or just continuing to watch our videos every day. We'd love having you all involved. Awesome. So I'll leave you all with that. Make sure to tune in later on for our video on how to do your own algae pressing. And hopefully we'll see you tomorrow morning for our Facebook live stream at 10 o'clock. Take care.